So we have a new Halloween movie coming out, again. David Gordon Green is helming the picture which will ignore all previous sequels and the remake series and instead be a direct continuation of the very first film, with events taking place 40 years after the night Michael Myers came home. I've never really been a big fan of the idea of new sequels coming into a franchise and retconning previous ones out of existence, even if they're good. It's a bit disrespectful, especially to the audience who had to sit and pay to watch those films and all of a sudden you're saying they no longer exist. Anyway, it's common practice these days and the Halloween franchise has already done it twice in a way. First you had Halloween 4 which ignored the previous entry, Season of the Witch, which was supposed to be the beginning of a new anthology style Halloween series and is my personal favourite sequel. And retconning the end of this second film where clearly there was no way Michael Myers and Dr Loomis could have survived, but they did. Then you had Halloween H20 where Jamie Lee Curtis wanted to make an anniversary film and the result ignored Halloween 4, 5 and 6's timeline instead picking up 20 years after the second movie. Curtis is lucky that she has another stab at the franchise with low budget horror specialist Blumhouse picking up the project and some really passionate people like Danny McBride going on about how they really want to make it work. They've even got the original director John Carpenter on board to produce, though that isn't saying much really seeing as though he's not afraid to say as long as studios pay him, he doesn't mind offering a helping hand to remake his films. And when you look at movies like 2005's The Fog, where Carpenter has said basically that he walked into the office, said hi to everyone, ate some food and left, the bar hasn't been set very high. What is very exciting however is that Carpenter is doing the score for the movie which is huge news and for a lot of horror fans I'm sure one of the primary reasons to watch the film. No doubt we'll have a variation of the original theme but I also look forward to seeing what else Carpenter cooks up. Recent albums from the man like Lost Themes shows he's still got it. Following the uninspired pattern of films like The Predator and The Thing, Halloween sequel is for some reason being called Halloween. It's pretty weird and will probably cause confusion with some people thinking it's a remake. Saying that though, watching the trailer you could make the argument that it is a reboot of sorts. We can hazard a guess that it will replicate the beats of the original with Myers escaping from the asylum and then wrecking havoc in Haddonfield. There's nothing wrong with that, a Halloween sequel doesn't need to reinvent the wheel and in fact it's probably advisable that it doesn't. It just needs to be an effective horror film. If it's engaging, well shot and scary, I think that's all that will be required of the movie. And it does look well shot, doesn't it? Just like with the original, the budget is super low and yet carries a really professional, top quality look. It's an interesting decision they made having Myers captured and locked up after the events of the first film. You could argue it nullifies the terrifying ending of the original where he gets shot but does a runner and you can hear the boogeyman breathing but you can't see him. He could be anywhere under your bed, in your closet, and he's out there. But what this film says is, lol, only joking, he probably passed out next to some tree two minutes after the first film ended, and he just thrown back behind bars. A major change with the new film though sees Jamie's Curtis locked and loaded, Sarah Connor style, having waited for Myers to escape. With Loomis's death, I guess she was the only person who really recognised that Michael Myers was an unstoppable force of evil, and thus became obsessed with him and anticipated his escape. It's an interesting departure to her character's nature in H20 and it remains to be seen which movie does the older Laurie better. The trailer has some really good shots, some of the standouts being the way the scene at the asylum is filmed and Michael dropping the teeth in the bathroom is stored. He looks terrific doesn't he? They've really got the mask absolutely spot on. Apparently it is actually the same mask from the original, or so I've heard. But anyway, with the numerous sequels, Myers tended to look really different in different movies. There's been all sorts of horrible renditions of the character with see-through peekaboo style eye holes and even a CGI mask in one of them. But this is the first film, going off the trailer at least, that has perfectly captured the look of the original Michael Myers. He's being played by the same actor too, bar the stunt scenes. All these attentive little details, including things like the hole in the side of the mask where Myers was stabbed in the original, really shows the filmmakers are taking this one seriously. The trailer humorously makes it clear that it isn't going through on the sister angle storyline. I couldn't stand it myself anyway, Carpenter had to get drunk to write it. A character in the trailer says, wasn't Laurie Michael's sister? To which another replies, no that was something people made up. Which is pretty funny. I was half expecting the next character to say, wasn't Michael unkillable because he was part of a thorn cult? Or didn't Laurie chop Michael's head off only for her to get the wrong man? 
Speaking of which, this new movie is supposed to reference every film in the franchise, and there's several examples in the trailer like the screech noise when Michael bumps into the kids, harking back to the popular scene from the second movie, the knife flip which also occurs in Resurrection, and the scenes in the garage and bathroom which reference Halloween 4 and H20. I am really looking forward to this, more than I thought I would initially several months ago when the project got traction. Seeing that they are really giving it to go and that Carpenter will pump out another score makes me want this film to be a success. I heard the test screenings were successful, with people not blown away but reacting positively to the film. Aside from the ending, which seemed to be unanimously hated, which has since been refilmed. A sequel is planned according to McBride. I wonder if that means we'll get another open ending, which we probably will be seeing as though every Halloween movie traditionally has one. I want this film to be a success. We've seen quite a few new low budget, concept based and atmosphere reliant horror films that have been huge successes. My expectations for the film is that we go to the cinema, get a decent premise, a cool synth soundtrack, a couple of scares and surprises, the established characters are respected and that's it. A 7, maybe 8 out of 10 nicely packaged 1 hour 45 minute film and that will be perfect. There won't be anything wrong with that. And here's hoping the film delivers. Thanks for watching.